So here's what happened. Back in the day, Finland's schools sucked on the level that ours suck on. When they tested the world's kids, both Finland and us were usually about the same, you know, somewhere down the list of nations. But Finland didn't like that. So they tried some new ideas, and in no time, Finland shot to the top of the world. Their students were number one. How did they do that? This is a school system that for years has been among the world's best. And then what about this gold one? Yeah, Mintu, please. And yet these kids will spend half as much time in a classroom. When you go to the first grade, when you are seven years old, the amount of hours is 20 hours a week. It's the minimum. And then it gets um, more hours the older you get, but it's still less than in many countries in Europe or in the world. So how many hours a day do the younger ones go to school? Um, Mondays, three hours. Tuesdays, four hours. It varies. It's 20 hours a week. So they're, oh man. Now, does this three or four hours at school include the lunch hour? Yes. <laughs> how are they learning anything? How are you getting anything done? Your brain has to, it has to relax every now and then. If you just constantly work, 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 then you stop learning, and there's no use of doing that for a longer period of time. Finland students have the shortest school days and the shortest school years in the entire Western world. They do better by going to school less. Yay! There are regular exams in Finland, but the results of these tests are not published and shared. We have national tests, but um, the big difference is we don't compare schools that this is not good school, this, this is bad school. And we just use the information that we evaluate ourselves. If there was one thing I heard over and over again from the Finns, it was that America should stop teaching to a standardized test. Get rid of those uh, standardized tests. National testing. A standardized tests. A standardized testing. What you are teaching your students is to do well on those tests and you're not really teaching them anything. They figure now about one third of the school time, the students are in school, is spent preparing for the standardized test. Mm. And so they've eliminated a lot of things that aren't on the test. So music is gone, art is gone, poetry is gone. gone. Yeah, in many schools. Civics isn't even on the test. So now schools are driving. Really? Civics, yes. Civics, American civics. Okay. <laughs> Unbelievable. We got rid of poetry. Really? Yeah. yeah. Why? It's a waste of time. When are they ever going to learn? When are they ever going to speak as poets when they're adults? How does that help them get a job? When you got back here in school, what did you notice that you felt relieved about? Uh, no more multiple choice exams. They no multiple choice exams here? Were, or, or very few of them, if any. Really? They, all of my exams in the US. How do you answer the question right if it isn't listed as one of the four choices? <laughs> You, you, write your answer. you have to know it, actually. Yeah. You actually have to know it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the whole term, homework, uh, is kind of obsolete, I think. These kids, they have a lot other things to do after school. Like what? Uh, like, like being together, like being with a family, uh, like uh, doing sports, like playing music like reading. So they have no homework. What if all they want to do is climb a tree? They could climb a tree, yeah. They can climb, climb a tree, then they learn how to climb a tree. But they'll end up, while climbing the tree, probably finding out about different insects, and they can come to school next day telling me about what they found. How many hours of homework did you get last night? Um, about 10 minutes or something. 10 minutes of homework. Yeah. yeah. Maybe 15 minutes or 20 minutes. 20 minutes, but not so much. Yeah. Well, if I would have done the homework, uh, I, I think it would be like 10 minutes tops. Usually I don't really do homework that much. In Finland, there's little anxiety about finding the right school for your child. We trust that they have very good school, so we don't need to do any research work yes. or... I think that is not a question. No, in no. Uh, how do you know which schools are the best? And You know, people need a list. The neighborhood school. 
is the best school. It is not different that, than the school which can be, for example, situated in the town centre, because all the schools in Finland, they are all equal. It seems like it's such a rich school, you must get more money than other schools. No, we don't. It's same money for everyone, actually. They take and borrow books. In Finland, schools are not allowed to raise private funds or to charge fees from parents. All schools are equitably funded from taxation. And in our system, everything is free for the students, actually. We don't collect any money from, from the parents. We want our schools to be equal and have the equal opportunities to arrange the education. So therefore, also the finance system need to be equal and treat equally all the schools. When we move to a new city, we never ask where the best school is. It's never a question. So nobody has to shop for schools. There's nothing different in any of our schools. They are the same. It is illegal in Finland to set up a school and charge tuition. That's why, for the most part, private schools don't exist. And what that means is that the rich parents have to make sure that the public schools are great. And by making the rich kids go to school with everyone else, they grow up with those other kids as friends. When I started doing teacher training practice back in the US, I, I was in these certain neighborhoods teaching these kids and telling them, you can be anything you want to be when you grow up. This is kind of a lie. And when I came to Finland, a lot of my teaching is based on what the kids want and what they see for their future. So it, it doesn't feel so false to say, you can really be whatever you want to be when you grow up, because they're making it happen already. They already have such power. In Finland, it's individual teachers who decide how the curriculum is taught, including how much technology should feature in their classrooms. Me tehdään sellaista pyramidi projektia, missä me esim nyt me kirjoitetaan hieroglyfeillä meidän nimet paperille ja sit me tehdään classroomista tehtäviä. Eleven-year-old Mintu Latomaki asks to leave class to work at the school's own student-run cafe. You can go. Yeah. That's okay. Shut your books down. Hello. Hello. One cake for the cameraman, one cake for me, and two coffees. How much is it? Seven euros and 60 cents. How much change? Uh, two euros and 40 cents. Ketos. Perfect. Is there a, a tip jar? Do you have tips? No. No, no tips. Okay. In Finland, school lunches, like books and excursions, are free. The kids select what they want, sit down with their friends and teachers to eat, before they clean up after themselves. The children rug up again to play outside. Some play a raucous version of soccer, some play basketball, while others wait for the hockey rink to open. There are plenty of options for bad weather days too. The facilities in this school are just amazing. Outside, we saw an ice skating rink, and in here, where the kids can play at lunchtime, there's a ping pong table, a pool table, and in here, for the cold winter days, they've got a room full of bean bags and couches, and there's even a PlayStation in the corner. In the United States, education is a business. There are corporations making money. Here, it's so student-centered that when we had to redo our playground, they had the architects come in and talk to the kids. Were, the they, were they listened to? Yes. Yes, there are things on our playground that the students really wanted. Being in school here is more independent. We were created more like adults than in the United States. Yeah. I mean, we don't need a hall pass to go to the bathroom during class. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see students commuting on, on the subway, uh, even as young as seven, and, and eight, going on their own to school. School is about finding your happiness, finding what, you know, finding a way to learn 
what makes you happy. We try to teach them to think for themselves and to be critical to what they're learning. We try to teach them to be happy person, to be respect others and respect yourself. You're concerned with their happiness. Oh yeah. So the math teacher says the, 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 the first thing out of your mouth of what you wanted these students to get out of school was to, was to be happy, to have a happy life. Yeah. And you're the math teacher. Yeah. When do they have their time to play and socialize with their friends and grow as human beings? Because there's so much more life around than just school. You want them to play? I want, I want children to play. We try to teach them everything that they need so that they could actually use their brain as well as they can, including PE, including arts, including music, anything that can actually make brain work better. The children need to be baking, they should be singing, they should be doing art and going on nature walks and doing all these things because there's this very short time that they're allowed to be children. It's not that we have figured out something that nobody else has done in education. That's wrong. Many of these things that have made Finland perform well in education are initially American ideas. But perhaps the single biggest difference in Finnish education is the standard of teaching. Levi's maths teacher, Una Arnes, speaks five languages and has postgraduate qualifications. So every one of us, we have to have a master's degree to, to be teachers. So like, for example, me, I'm math and, and chemis uh, chemistry and physics teacher. In Finland, a career as a teacher is highly sought after. To enter the studies in university, actually, it's really hard. They take something like 10% to study teaching. If you really want to be a teacher, it can't be your second or third or I don't know what kind of option. It has to be your first. I believe that they know what is the best for our children. I'm not a teacher, I don't have that education, so we don't interfere their work. Finland is a vastly different country with a tiny homogenous society. But its education success must surely offer some lessons and its investment in teachers seems an obvious place to begin. I would like to say that try to build the system that you trust the people. The society respects the teachers. It means also the parents respect the teachers and they don't question the teachers. And that's in Finland a really huge thing.